thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? None evil can come upon us. You know what is troubling is the true church is caught in a world with these liars and thieves where they cannot determine sometimes who is true and who is false. Now a good exegetical study of Matthew 13 will help Christian will help the Christian clear up some of the confusion. But the fact of the matter is that the world is filled with false prophets and false teachers producing false religion. These people are evil beasts like the Cretans in the pastoral epistle to Titus. These liars who profess to know God, but their unfruitful works they display proves they know not the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll see that in verse 16 of Titus chapter 1. This is a problem. A situation which has caused some to turn from the faith of Christianity. Some have gone completely after false religions in hopes of finding examples of godly male leadership in a country which has turned men into feminized boys. Yes, men into feminized boys. Feminized weak men are taking the pulpit now and listen, allowing their wives or side time flings to co-pastor with them, which is not scriptural, only to speak more falsehood from the pulpit. Now you wonder, is the siren going off in the body of Christ, almost pleading for the body of Christ, for true, faithful, strong, bold male leaders? Male leaders who Christ will call to be pastors and they will not be ashamed to silence shenanigans by standing for sound biblical truth that only comes from the Bible. They are they're needed to close the mouths of evil liars by exemplifying godly conduct which shows they are sound in the faith. As we dive into the epistle of Titus, the bigger question for us is, looking at the epistle as a whole, how was an ungodly Crete not affected by the current church of Crete at that time? Why was there not an impact by the church at that time? See, praise the Lord. Paul recognizes the problem and leaves Titus a strong man of God to bring order to disorder and to place godly leadership back intact. He didn't call a woman to do it. He called a man. Now opening the truths of Titus, you will see that this is not just a mere personal letter at all. This is a pastoral epistle directed to the church and to Titus, meaning all who will read and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now listen, in chapter 1 of this epistle, we will, we will begin to search for sound biblical leadership where Paul is exhorting another pastor, Titus, who traveled with Paul, whom he left in Crete to set things in order and appoint elders for the church there, which we will see in verse 5. Crete was a land filled with liars, of such that one of their own poets spoke of them in verse 12. This type of opposition was very strong, similar to that of which Timothy faced in first and second Timothy when he was in Ephesus. This chapter addresses the importance of having sound biblical leadership in the faith which sheds gospel truth in a world filled with false religion. This is the beginning of the antidote this is the start of the solution, this chapter here. It's beginning from the top on down. So that, what does that stress? The character and conduct of, of a sound biblical male leader is the focus of this chapter. The first step into proclaiming godliness among an ungodly world is the building up and electing of strong male leaders to rage war against a world system bent on lies. Yes, notice I am mentioning male leaders because that is what a bishop and an elder is according to the Bible. 
And that's what Paul was telling Titus to set an order and to a point. Now with that, a misguided person can come to the truth of this book and see how pastors should exemplify living a godly life free from the lust of this world. Now in particular in this chapter, we will see 1. Paul greets Titus as one strong male leader to another strong male leader that with a task. You will also see, hopefully, we will come to understand some of the criterion needed to establish male pastors and elders. That's very important. And while we will also see what was the main cause for male leaders to be needed in Crete. You must note that Titus, as a whole, places your attention to a world that is watching. A world that is watching either liars or true teachers. A false church or a true one. A false religion versus a chosen Christian reality, the truth. With that said, understanding the conduct of a biblical male leader is in very, very important. They have to display qualities which are consistent with apostolic doctrine. For better understanding of male leaders, the Bible teaches on having strong male leadership by giving some qualifications for pastors and elders. See, scripture confirms that you need strong male leaders. Now, I'm going to go to a very well-known scripture and that we're going to look at that. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 so we can get an idea of what a faithful male elder looks like. And you've heard me read this in many of my clips. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine nor striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good rapport of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach and snare of the devil. So you see those qualifications, those qualities that he must have, all by the Spirit of God, blameless faithful husbands to their wives and family and self-controlled. Does this define a strong male pastor in your church? Is your bishop the biggest slave in your church? Or is he slaving the people? Oh, my friends, we can come to learn a lot from the Word of God about this particular subject. But now let us begin, and before we read the blessed word of God, we will pray. Lord Heavenly Father, as we come into this study of Titus chapter 1, Lord, open our eyes and see that there is a need for men, sound in the faith, well trained, well taught, and is also apt to teach and willing to correct, bold in correction, rebuking that which is false. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to the truth of your word. Lord, let us not become angry because we don't like what the Bible says, but let us be open to your word and investigate what you are saying. This we ask in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, I'm going to read the whole chapter for you, and then um, in the next clips, I will begin the series on Titus chapter 1. But right now, we're going to read the text.
That's the first thing we want to do. Let God speak to you.